just wait for people to join. I just got a notification that it's gone on live on my phone. One person. Four people. Good afternoon everybody, my name is Tricia and I'm one of the midwives um, at the John Wycliffe currently on the Spires in one of the delivery rooms and here is Natalie, hello, who's another one of the midwives. Um, this is the first time we've done this so please forgive us if it's a bit amateurist because we, we haven't done this before. Um, we're trying to socially distance, obviously if we get closer together we'll put masks on but at the moment we're managing to maintain our social distancing. Um, and we have been asked to cover skin care and um, topping and tailing and bathing baby. Um, so that's what we're going to try and show you today. Uh, we haven't got a real baby, unfortunately. Um, and the reason for that is, A, we don't bath brand new babies. That's uh, come on to that a little bit later, but that's not the, the current best advice. Um, secondly, um, we wouldn't want to put a naked baby on social media, so um, in respect of the baby's modesty, we're using a doll. Um, and I can't remember the third reason, but there was a third reason why we're not doing a real baby. But anyway, you've got a doll, uh, so I'm sorry about that. Um, so the first thing to say is that um, with skincare and newborn babies, less is definitely more. Um, so you can buy all sorts of fancy products um, and all the baby companies try and sell you lots of fancy products but actually just good old plain old-fashioned water is what we should really be using on our babies in the first uh, month of life um, and the reason for that is your skin is the biggest organ in your body uh, and when a newborn baby is born that skin has got to settle down and um, the immune system needs to get going and um, the, all sorts of magical things happen which are not helped by putting products on the skin can set up allergies for later on um, and just doesn't really help. So when your baby's first born, if baby's a bit early, he or she might be covered in a waxy substance called vernix which is a little bit like a very thick hand cream. And that's designed to protect the skin against uh, the amniotic fluid. Uh, and it gradually gets absorbed in the last few weeks of pregnancy. So a late baby might have used up all that vernix and be a bit wrinkly and dry. Um, and sometimes baby's skin can be quite flaky and dry. And parents worry about that and what they should do about it. Um, and I think it's fair to say it worries mums and dads more than babies, would you yeah, say? Absolutely. Yeah. So um, it doesn't usually cause the baby any discomfort, to be honest. It is just flaky skin and babies are like little lizards. They shed that first skin and then the nice fresh skin that's coming behind it um, will, be, will be much better. Um, so anyway, I'm going to put my little baby down now and just run through the top and tailing here. So Parents do get worried about bathing. Um, it's a bit scary sometimes if you've got a new baby, um, worried about dropping them or whether they're going to get the temperature right or that sort of thing. And just to say here, you do not need to bath your baby every day um, or even every week. So for the first week of life, uh, we would suggest that you just top and tail your baby. Um, and this should be done once a day at your convenience. There's no right or wrong time to do it, or even really any right or wrong way to do it. I'm just going to show you uh, the way that, that I was taught as a, as a midwife and used as a mother myself. Um, Natalie might do it slightly differently. It doesn't really matter. But what you need is a baby, a nice warm room, and a bowl of water. And I've got here just a, a regular, it's actually a cereal bowl from the ward kitchen, um, which probably isn't what you'd use. but a bowl that you designate for washing your baby um, is, is, is a good idea. You don't need fancy top and tailing bowls uh, unless you're given them as lovely presents. So I've got my little baby here and um, he's very quiet. <laughs> he might not be this quiet. Okay. So I've washed my hands. So if we could just pretend I've washed my hands. Obviously, 
you need to wash your hands before you do anything really with your baby because um, if you've got germs on your hands and you get them into the baby's eyes, you can cause infection, etc. So at the moment, we're all washing our hands more and more anyway, but I've, I've just washed my hands. I've got my bowl of warm water and I've got my cotton wool and I've got some nice fresh clothes here ready on the side. Where you do the top and tailing does not matter. If you've got a changing uh, table, then that's great. If you haven't, um, you can have your baby on your lap or you can get down on the floor, put a, a big blanket or a, a bath towel on the floor and just get down on the floor to do it. And a lot of mums and dads feel more confident doing that. Um, it's amazing how early babies learn to roll. So I would never, ever advise doing it on a bed or a table where if you turn your back the baby's going to roll off so to do be careful about that so i'm going to take my little baby and tell him or her what i'm going to do because the way he or she is going to learn um, what his nose looks like or is what his nose is and ears and so is by hearing it over and over again so i'm going to say hello little man and he is a little man you'll see in a minute when i take his nappy off um, so we're just going to wash your face and we tend to wash one side of the face and then the other, just so we don't spread any germs that are around from one side to the other. So I'm going to just take a cotton wool ball and just go around the eye. Can you see that? Is that working, Natalie? Yeah, that's working. Um, around the eye and his little nose and his mouth and his chin. Um, and then just round the ear, round the outside of the ear and behind the ear, because that often gets... Uh, a bit sort of sweaty and sticky and that vernix um, that I was talking about is often behind the ears and then just in the folds of his ears and his neck and it's quite important to, to do the neck underneath because when milk dribbles down it tends to sit under the neck and it goes turns into cheese so it's quite good to, to do that and then we'll just dry him under here and you're very good boy and now we're going to do the other side of your face so again we're going round the eye the fold of his nose and his little chin and the cheek behind the ear and the folds of the ear and into the neck and then again round here i should have said at the beginning and i forgot that um, we will take questions um, between this top and tail demo and the bath demo. So don't worry, we'll look at your questions in a minute. So that's his face done. Um, just a, a point on ears. Um, it's important never ever to use Q-tips or cotton buds in your baby's ears. Um, the ear canal is very short and it's extremely um, fragile and it's, it's easy to perforate the eardrum. So don't be tempted if you see waxy bits in the ears um, leave them or you can twist your cotton wool ball and just sort of give it a little clean but don't poke anything into the baby's ear okay so good boy we've done that so far I always leave the nappy on until last because if you take the nappy off at this point it can get messy and a bit confusing and all a bit stressful so I would leave that with its cargo till the last minute um, and now I'm going to get a fresh piece of cotton wool and I'm going to clean his creases basically. So I would take one hand and often their hands are closed um, and they sometimes have a bit of fluff that they've pulled off clothing or what have you. So if you can, you sometimes need to encourage the hand to open, but if you go on the palm of the hand and then in the crease of the arm, that gets a bit sticky sometimes. And then in the armpit and the armpits are important because they can get a bit sore if um, if sort of greasy stuff builds up. So I would I would suggest that you always do the armpit. Always the creases. There's a good boy. Now we're going to do the other side. And then when you've had this, you'll be able to have a nice feed, or maybe we'll sing to you, or we'll look at a book together. Because even though you're very new, we know that you'll be looking at books very very early on and enjoying them. Uh, so there, that's the top bit done, washed and dried. A um, little bit on cord care. Now I'm going to um, ask Natalie to talk about cord care because she's the community midwife 
And I was a community midwife, but I haven't done a community for quite a while. So I think it would be nice for Natalie to give you her current, current advice on the cord. So really, really simple. Again, like we mentioned before, less is more, especially with the cord. The best thing to do is keep it well alone. The more it can dry, the quicker it will dry out and initially fall off. Sometimes just as it's separated, it can become a little bit sticky and you might find that there's a little bit of sticky stuff on the skin around the cord. That's absolutely fine just to clean with some cold boiling water and cotton oil. But if you are going to clean the actual stump of the cord, make sure you pat it down well um, after you've done that. Um, and also just keep the nappy folded underneath the cord and let the cord come out so it can have, get lots of air to it. Lovely, thanks Natalie. Right, so now we're going to do the explosive bit. And um, not always, but it might be. So the nappy comes off next. And I shall leave that there for a minute. You can use the nappy to get the, if the baby's done a poo, use the nappy to get the worst of the poo off and then just fold it back on itself like that. And then before I do the bottom and get the cotton wool all yucky, I'm just going to go into the back of baby's knees because that's another place that, again, there are creases that just need a little wash. And then we'll dry those. And then I'm going to wash his bottom. So in the groin, because that can get a little bit sore, like that. Uh, with a little boy, I would usually just lift the foreskin up very gently and just wash underneath it because sometimes poo gets trapped under the uh, scrotum and can be a bit sore. And then I'll dry him. Um, now I've had a little girl here. Um, the important thing with a little girl is to remember that you clean from front to back. Um, so you don't want to be doing that because you can transfer germs from the um, back passage up into the vagina. So you want to go from front to back with a little girl. So wash and dry that. Um, I think he's all done. Now if he was very pooey, I might need to just turn him over and just, um, it can go up the back. So I might just need to do that as well. So just check what's going on at the back there so there he is he's topped and tailed he's going to have a fresh nappy on and we get so nappy off last and on first if you want to avoid messy times okay so i'm just going to pop him up here on there now natalie was mentioning the cord which um I'll just put his arms up actually if we pretend he's got a cord, he actually hasn't, it's, his is separated. But a good way of, um, sometimes the nappy's too big for the baby. So if you take a little pleat in the nappy, like that, I don't know whether you can, can you see that? Yeah, you can actually, you might need to just hold the camera. There we go. Yeah, so if you, if you take a little pleat in it, that front bit's still waterproof. Whereas if you just folded it back, that gets wet. So if you go, if you do a little pleat like that, and then take your tape and bring it round, sort of at an angle like that, that makes it nice and neat and folds it all. And then the cord is free and can do its thing of drying and hopefully falling off between about six and day 10. So he's got his nappy on. Um, I'm now going to get put his vest on. Now in this, um, this weather, uh, you need to be sort of aware of what clothes you're putting on, whether the weather um, baby needs more or less. But we're going to put a vest, baby grow, and cardigan on this baby. So parents often look at the vest and think, how am I going to get that on the baby? But it's actually very easy. You'll be doing it quickly, very quickly. So I would get all the, gather all the material up there, go for the back of baby's head, so if you put it on the back first and then quickly over the face. And then just a little tip for getting the, the arms into the clothes. It's very tempting to try and stuff the arm into the, into the vest, but it, sometimes it's quite difficult. And I find if you just take two fingers and stick them in the sleeve end like that, 
actually I think I put my thumb in there as well I don't know if you can see that but you can then take the baby's hand and guide it into the clothes which is easier than stuffing it in from the other way round so that's that one. Oh my goodness real babies aren't this <laughs> rigid <laughs> so there's the other hand going in there and then we just bring that one up and then with the oh, get that done up there. so with the baby grow if you open the baby grow up I'm actually just going to pick him up and slide that underneath and then literally pop him on it like that and I'm doing the same thing of putting my hand inside the sleeve, taking his hand and feeding it like that and then the same there, that finger like that. There we go, and then the legs go in. And I notice now that most of these baby grows have got a brass um, popper, or a lot of them have got a brass popper, um, so that you know that's number one, because that's the, the bane of every new parent's life, is finding you do all the poppers up and then the last one is wrong. Where is it? Oh, there it is. Oh, brass one. There's the brass one. That's it. I get the first one done up. Um, and then we do these ones up. He's a good boy. In a pink baby grow. In a pink baby grow. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. You see, I still haven't done it right, even with the brass popper. There we go. That's it. Now, I'm not going to put his cardigan on today because it's very hot in this room. Um, we'll talk about temperature a bit later on after the bath. Um, just a little thing on hats. Um, I've started now, so I'll finish. So when your baby is first born, you're asked to bring a, a hat into hospital or if you're at home, you have a hat as part of the kit to put on the baby when he or she is born. The reason for that is that um, babies are damp when they're born and for the first 12 hours or so, they sometimes have a little bit of difficulty maintaining their temperature and as the head is the biggest part it has a big surface area they can get cold very quickly so that's why we, we put a, a hat on the baby for the first few hours however that hat can come off and sometimes we forget to tell you that so um, so I'm saying now after about 12 hours if the baby's temperature is normal and um, you know it's not the middle of winter and freezing cold then do take the hat off and then babies should not wear hats indoors. Um, so there is a good baby. He's bathed. No, he's not. He's topped and tailed. Top um, as we said, once a day, um, good, good to wash him or her. Top to tail once a day. It's absolutely your choice when you do that. Um, and then afterwards, a nice feed and, and a cuddle. I wouldn't probably top and tail, tail a baby that's just been fed because um, that can make them very sicky. Um, and likewise, I wouldn't probably top and tail a starving, hungry and cross baby. So somewhere in between, you will get to know your baby, you'll get to know when it's right to do the topping and tailing. Um, so I think we'll take some questions in a minute. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. So if it doesn't look like there is any. Um, if anyone wants to ask any questions, we can take questions now about baby care. Mm -hmm. okay. Is it okay to use water wipes? Um, it's absolutely your true choice to use what you like on your baby. Water, plain water is always, it is always, you know, um, 
the preferred method, but certainly it's not the most convenient, especially as your baby gets older. What I would say is anything that you are using on the baby, just test it on the baby's skin prior to use, just to make sure the baby doesn't have any red patches or has any allergic to reaction to that. I hope that answered your question, Georgina. So, Barbie, my friend has told me off for wanting to use water wipes from birth. Is that okay? So I think that's a similar question that was asked earlier. So it's absolutely your baby and your decision. Um, like I said, just be safe and test things first. Which nappies are the best ones to use? <laughs> we can't recommend any brands. Um, as long as your baby is changed regularly. Ba nappies are very absorbent, which is very good. Um, so I don't think there's one that's particularly better than the other. Just read the reviews and choose for yourself. And save money where you can. Yeah, you'll go through quite a lot. So, <laughs> <laughs> And you might find your baby suits better to the different designs of the different ones. So feel free to, um, you know, have a shop around and see which ones. And some people might want to consider real nappies as well. And there is the real nappy yeah. company. Yeah. You can um, do some research on that. Um, an initial big outlay, but um, cheaper in the long run. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so Sarah, um, if baby does first poo while we're at hospital, which we should hope it does, yes, um, before you go home, um, do I ask him a drive to provide water? So, yep, yeah, you can do. Um, there are sinks all designated um, either in the rooms or on the bay, but just some warm water from the tap with the cotton wool that you packed is absolutely fine. The other point, actually, I don't, there's some questions coming in, but I've just thought of one. People often ask about cream um, to prevent nappy rash, but the, the disposable nappies are so good now at absorbing the liquid that actually the baby's skin isn't wet and you don't really need a barrier cream. Um, if your baby gets nappy rash, that's a different matter and, and then you need to speak to your midwife or your health visitor about the best cream to use um, and they will, they will let you know, but it's usually a zinc-based um, nappy cream that would be advised. So Madison, can you use cotton pads? Yep, cotton pads, cotton wool, absolutely fine. Cotton pads are a bit bigger, so it might be easier to kind of get off what you need. The main, the main thing is that you're using water with it. So yeah, cotton pads, cotton wool, all the same. So that's absolutely fine. Can't find any. Oh yeah. Where can I get them? So Andrea, your question about the premature baby nappies is probably a really good question that Skaboo nurses can help you with. We don't really have a lot to do with the premature babies because obviously they go straight to the special care baby unit. So they would probably be the go-to in terms of the smaller nappies and where to get them from. Or you can always have a little look online. Nappies are usually done by weight, aren't they? Mm. Weight. Mm. So you can always Google and see um, if um, that can help. I think there's a few questions coming in now on the bathing and summer and temperature. So it might be a good place for us to pause and do the bath demo and then to take some of those questions afterwards. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah. Okay with you? So yeah, Christina, the bath temperature. We're going to talk about layers and heat of summer, Beatrice, so we get back to you as well. We'll do that in a minute, yeah. And outfits and stuff we'll talk to as well. Okay. Okay, so we're going to move on to the bath, the baby bath now, and then we can take some more questions after. So um, don't panic if you feel like your answer hasn't been, your question hasn't been answered, we will get we to will you. We will get to it. So, um, I'm just going to get my cotton wool balls. Do you think for this bit? And yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna spin it around on you. So, everybody, hang on, bear with us, bear with. <laughs>
behind it, I think. Uh, hang on a minute, everybody. We're just trying to... Oh, that's why I have to done it. technical hitch. Yep, there we okay. go. Okay. Yep. So, um, now we're going to move on to bathing. Um, sorry, I just put my little crib sheet there. Hi, Amanda. I'm waiting for you to have this baby. <laughs> <laughs> so, having just... Um, can you see properly? Yep, can see everything. Right. So, having just covered um, topping and tailing, um, we'll now do bathing. Now, I am doing everything or actually on one of the delivery beds in the Spires um, midwife-led unit. Um, when you're at home, you need to decide where the best place to bath your baby is and where the safest place is and where you feel most confident. So, a lot of people um, don't feel confident about the first bath. Um, and if that's you, then what I would suggest is you just put the whole lot on the floor. So get a big blanket or a towel and spread that on the floor and lay everything out that you need and then get down and bath your baby on the floor. I was going to do that, but I've got a bit of a dodgy back and I didn't think I could quite do that today. So I'm doing it up on this, on this, um, on this bed. Um, but the principles are the same. So I've got... Um, a couple of towels, I've got my cotton wool, I've got a fresh set of clothes, which are actually the clothes the baby was wearing earlier on. Um, but let's pretend that they're all lovely and clean and smell gorgeous and they're all ready. Um, so I shall pop those there. And then I've got my baby bath. Now, when you're filling the baby bath, you don't have to have a baby bath, so um, a, a washing up bowl that's designated just for the baby is perfectly adequate for bathing a newborn baby. Um, you can buy all sorts of fancy baths now that have little backrests and all of that stuff. If you choose to have those, that's fine, but you really don't need to go out and spend a lot of money on a baby bath. This one has been knocking around in the hospital for many, 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 moons. many years. <laughs> Um, and so that's why I'm using that today. Um, so yes, yeah, so you need something to bath the baby in. Very soon you can bath the baby in the big bath. So, um, you know, washing up bowl for the first few weeks is absolutely fine. So the first thing I want to do is make sure that the room is nice and warm. So um, I would usually close windows unless it's a very, very hot day. Um, and I'm going to I've left my baby's nappy on, I've taken his other clothes off, and I'm going to wrap him up in a towel. And actually, if you look, I don't know whether you can see this, but I'm going to put him over to the far side of a, a towel, and have the short side there, and then the longer side that way, because then I'm going to have something to dry his hair with if I, if I want to do that. So. Fill the bath. Now, I wouldn't stagger across the, the room with a great big bath full of water. That's not going to hurt, do your back any good, um, and it's just not very advisable. So I would usually fill the bath either with a jug or put a little bit of water in the bath and carry it to where you're going to be doing the bath and then fill it up. People often ask about the depth. There's no magic depth um, of water. But what I would say is babies don't like too shallow a bath because then they're half in and half out and they feel chilled and they feel um, insecure. So a nice deepish bath where maybe you can get his or her shoulders under the water with you supporting is quite nice and you'll find they, they really like to thrash about and have a bit of a kick then. So don't be frightened of making it a reasonable depth. Temperature wise, um, the best thing to do is it's a warm bath, sort of just slightly warmer than blood heat. Um, traditionally, you put your elbow in the water to check the temperature, um, but if you've got you know, slightly tough elbows, um, your wrist is actually more sensitive. So that part of your wrist um, is thinnish skin, uh, probably more like what the baby is feeling than your elbow, and you just dip your wrist in, and it just should feel comfortably warm. Okay, so that's, that's there. So I've got my bath. Um, I've got no soap in here, no bubble bath, nothing, because I want my baby's skin to be able to um, adapt to being outside of the womb and to settle down over the next, over the first month before I use anything in the water. 
After that, if you want to use something, well, it's your choice anyway, all along, um, but if you are putting stuff in the baby bath, then make sure that it's um, hypoallergenic and um, made especially for babies. But water is fine. So what I'm going to do is actually a, a bit of a repeat of um, earlier on, in that I'm just going to, first of all, tell him he's going to have a bath. So we're going to give you a bath now. Um, talk to your baby and say we're going to do round there, and then we're going to do round there. So the same principle that we did before, one side and then the other. If your baby does have sticky eyes, I think I did say about the cool boiled water um, to get the stickiness out, but the other magic thing um, is a little bit of breast milk. So if baby's got sticky eyes, um, if you are breastfeeding, then um, putting some, some uh, breast milk into the eye when you, after you've wiped them clean does help because there's an antibacterial substance in the breast milk. You know, it's magical stuff and it, and it can help. Um, people often say, well, how on earth am I going to do that? Um, and generally speaking, I would put the baby upside down and you can use your imagination how I would just squirt a bit of breast milk in there. So I've done that and now I'm going to put him in the water. So you want to make sure you've got everything ready. You don't want to be in that sort of oh, oh, oh stage. So I've made a check, I've got everything ready and I'm now going to put baby in. So I'll just show you a, a safe way. I'm going to take the nappy off. I'm pleased to say he hasn't done a poo in those last few minutes, so I'm fine. But if, I, if he had, I'd probably get the worst of the poo off before I put him in the water. Um, and then a, a good way to put the baby in the water is to put your hand behind his back and hold the arm furthest away from you like that in a sort of ring. Can you see that, Natalie? Yep. And then with the other hand, pass it underneath the baby and hold the leg, opposite, the, the furthest away leg, again, in a ring like that. That's a really good firm hold. That baby's not going anywhere. And then I'm going to lift him up and I'm going to tell him what I'm doing. I'm going to put him in the water now and it's going to be really lovely and you're not going to scream, which obviously you might do. And then you lower baby in. They sometimes do scream. Um, but you've got a nice firm hand there on that arm, so if he wriggles and screams and kicks about, I'm not going to drop him. He's nice and firm. I'm actually going to bring this bath slightly closer to me because I'm reaching too far. There we go. As I said before, if this baby's arm, his shoulders won't go under the water because he's floating because he's made of plastic. <laughs> but um, generally speaking, your baby will sink under the water a little bit, the shoulders will. And then you can. Take this hand away from the leg, keep the one on the arm to keep it nice and firm, and then just use the other hand just to swish him with the water. Like that. And he's quite sad. And often they'll settle then and they'll start kicking about. Um, and it's up to you then to read your baby and decide whether this is fun for him or her, um, and whether they're enjoying it, or he absolutely hates it, and, and you need to bail out and take him out. So just, they, they do tend to quite like it actually. And then I'm going to get the baby out in the same way, so I'm taking that arm again, underneath, putting my hand in a ring round the thigh, shake off the drips, and pop baby here. And I've actually, as I was doing that, thinking, oh, I didn't wash his hair. So that's fine because um, I can do it now. And as a new mum, you're bound to sometimes do things back to front or upside down. I think, oh, I forgot to do this, that and the other. Absolutely fine. I'm going to pat him dry, paying attention to the creases, drying in his hands, under his arm, on his neck. They often do cry at this point, even if they've had a nice time in the water. Um, so you just do it as quickly as you can. And just pat baby down, talk, sing. Um, you do that very naturally. 
anyway. Um, and then I'm not putting on any creams, lotions, potions, towel, anything like that. It was just the water. If your baby's got really, really dry skin and you're very worried about it, you think it's cracking in the, in the wrists or the ankles and you want to put something on it, um, then use a unscented and nut-free oil of you know, whatever you choose. But the guideline is to, to not. But if you, if you feel that you must, then at least use something that, that's got no scent um, and no nuts in it. So having done it slightly back to front, baby's now washed, but I didn't do his hair. Now you don't have to wash baby's hair every day by any means. Um, so that's fine. This was a day when he wasn't having his hair washed. But let's pretend that he now is having his hair washed and just show you how to do that. So I talked about the towel shorter on one side, longer on the other. And then we pick him up and put him under your arm like a rugby ball, like that. And you just hold his head over the water and you do it like that. And talk and say, we're just washing your hair. And there we go. And they sometimes quite like that actually. So that's that. And then I've got this long bit of towel here that I can just bring round to dry his head. Or I can have a second towel on the go, whichever, whichever you choose really. So there we are. So I'm just going to pop him down there. Now, if I dress baby, um, I think perhaps if Natalie starts to look at some of the questions and answers some of your questions while I dress him, um, and then we'll talk a little bit more about um, baby care, temperature control and, and the summer and that sort of thing after that. Okay. Yep. Just work out how do I... <laughs> Small technical Hello, everybody. <laughs> um, we're back taking more questions. If you have any questions, would you like to send them in? Um, so we've done the skincare and the bath, the baby bath. Just go back and see. There were a few right there, but actually, yeah. The bath temperature. So, in the heat of summer, how many layers would you dress your newborn in for the night time? So, what we usually advise is um, use your common sense. If it's really, really warm, um, you know, make sure you're using blankets with holes and you're only maybe perhaps putting one layer on the baby. Um, a sleep suit without a vest during the summer is more than enough with a blanket with holes on so that the um, there's layers for the heat and the air to escape. What the main thing to remember is if, if you're having a blanket, if you've got a thin blanket like this, this is one layer. If you fold it in half, you then have two layers. So you're putting that on top of the baby as well as a sleep suit. So just be cautious when you come to folding ta uh, blankets and stuff because that will... Um, equal as well um, and also um, if you if you're worried about checking your baby's temperature um, whether he's too hot or cold then use the back of your hand yeah. um, and just feel in the baby's neck or the chest or the back so it's on the baby's trunk is where you feel whether they're too hot or too cold mm -hmm. hands and feet are not reliable because hands and feet in a newborn baby can feel quite cold um, but it doesn't mean the baby's cold. Yeah. Um, and they can also be a bit purple as well for the first couple of weeks, and that's normal. Um, when do we start using baby bath and baby shampoo? There's no current guidance on it. Um, again, we would say, um, I think it's up to one month to just use warm water. Yeah, just water to a month, yeah. Um, and then it's your preference. And again, just be precautious and test everything. Uh, make sure baby hasn't got any reaction. How many times a week do you need to, to bath a newborn? So babies aren't generally dirty. Um, 
top tail, the, what we showed you earlier with just cleaning the creases, is sufficient for the, for the first at least couple of weeks or certainly until the cord's fallen off. And then it's your preference as and when you feel like baby needs to have a bath. Yeah, they, they, um, you might find that it's a nice routine to, you know, a nice sort of thing to do as sleepy time, you know, pre-bed. Yeah. Or you might find that that doesn't work for you. Um, it really is you and your baby finding what's best for them and there's no right answer as to how often to bath the baby. You need to wash them um, every 24 hours really, but bathing is entirely up to you and if your baby hates it then just don't do it for a while, it, 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 it's not going to hurt. So Susie, can I have the baby in the bath with you very carefully on your lap with plain water? Absolutely. Yes. Another form of skin to skin, a really good bonding time. Baby, especially if a baby who isn't particularly keen on getting in the bath might feel a little bit more comforted with you being in the bath. Just make sure you've got somebody that can perhaps help you maybe get the baby in a towel while you get in a towel, etc. Um, and just check the temperature as well because your normal hot bath would probably be too hot for, for baby. baby. So do the old wrist thing and it should be sort of just, just warmer than blood heat. Sorry, I'm down. I'm yeah. up there. <laughs> um, <laughs> the yeah, it's lovely. It's a nice thing for daddies to do as well sometimes. A um, bit of bonding time for them. Um, and as Natalie said, it, it, it's just a bit of a two-person two job. So one drops the baby, or not drops the baby, puts the baby in the bath with the other parent. Yeah. Um, and then hands the baby out before they get out. So yeah, it's a lovely thing to do. Yeah, definitely. Um, so that's Susie. Susie, you're going to have to do it. Um, so is cord infection ever an issue and how can you deal with it? Cord infection can 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 be um, can sometimes be an issue. If it is, you'd get your midwife to check it first. And uh, if they do think it's an infection, then you just pop to your GP um, just to get some ointment or some powder to put on. It's very easily um, dealt with. Um, so if you're ever worried, always ask your community midwife to have a little look for you um, just to check. I hope that answered your questions. Think. Yeah, that's all the questions answered. Any okay. anybody else? So um, I was just going to show you swaddling. Um, some people find that their babies settle better if they are swaddled, and they ask whether that's okay or not okay. Um, I would like to direct you to the Lullaby Trust. Um, website so if you go on to hang on a second www.lullabytrust.org there is masses of information on there um, about all of this sort of thing and they really are the leading edge on the research into safety for your baby and particularly for avoiding um, sudden infant death which is uh, not something we like talking about but it's in the back of every parent's mind so the Lullaby Trust um, has all the most current and up-to-date um, evidence for uh, the safety of your baby. Um, and the other thing is the Baby Check app. So we used to give you a little booklet um, which would give you uh, a sort of pointers to know whether your baby was ill or not ill and who to call or when to, to take action. It's now on an app, so you can download the Baby Check app and that comes uh, from the Lullaby Trust and it's all the up-to-date information. And if your baby's not well, you enter stuff onto the app and it then gives you advice. Oh, some more questions? Oh, oh yes, yes. <laughs> I've got to socially distance. <laughs> social Rachel, that's very sweet of me. Thank you, that's made my day. <laughs> uh, do you need a special baby towel? No, just um, a nice soft towel. Um, and make sure that you've washed it in a, you know, a, a not a biological washing powder. Um, but yeah, any towel is fine. Oh, I said I was going to do swaddling, didn't I? Yes. And then I was talking about the Lullaby Trust. Um, because their guideline is that they don't advocate or not advocate it. Um, either way, but if you are swaddling your baby, they suggest that you um, 
leave the shoulders free. So what you don't want to do is overheat your baby. Um, but babies sometimes sleep uh, or, or feel more secure if they're swaddled because their little arms do this a lot and they frighten themselves. If that's the case, uh, what they suggest is that you do it as part of the um, sleep time routine day and night. Um, and you put the baby onto your onto a light, this is a very light sheet, you don't use a heavy blanket to do this. And then you just literally wrap the baby with the shoulders free, like that. And basically what I'm doing, not too tight, um, what, what I'm doing is stopping the baby sort of frightening itself by flinging its arms up. Um, so yeah, I'm sure like that. If you can see. So a swaddled baby should, well all babies should sleep on their backs, but obviously a swaddled baby should always be on its back, not its front. Um, make sure the baby's not too hot. Uh, you can buy swaddlers, they, sort of they're cut into a shape and they velcro together. I don't really have any opinions on those. Um, I think a, a light sheet is just as good as anything else, but... It's very common for babies to like being swaddled when they're in hospital and then you get home and try and swaddle them and they don't have any of it. Like it. So, yeah. so that's, that's entirely up that to you. Um, people often ask about using the mitts on the baby grows. Um, this one's got them, the little scratch mitts. And they're designed to stop the baby scratching its face because often they have sharp little nails. Um, we don't advise that you cut the nails in the first, certainly the first week really, um, but sometimes they are long and scratchy. Yeah. If you do want to cut them, then there are teeny tiny um, baby nail clippers that you can get, which are possibly safer than scissors. Um, I don't advocate biting their nails, because it's a bit of an old wives tale that you nibble them, but mm. actually you can tear the nail and then that can cause a little skin infection at the side of the finger, which can actually be quite serious. So I wouldn't advise that. Nail file sometimes. Yeah, a little, little nail file, a little emery board nail file if they've got sharp edges. With the mitts, uh, with, a, with a brand new baby, um, one of the things that we suggest you do with a newborn is if you're wanting to breastfeed, um, is is not to wash the hands and let them, they, they can smell the amniotic fluid, they smell their mum, it helps them with sucking their fists and it's all part of the, the cues for, um, for feeding. So I think it's quite a good idea to let babies have their hands if, if um, at all possible so that they can suck them and explore them and you know, feel with them and all the rest of it. So I'm not saying never, but I, I, I think it's a bit sad for babies if their hands are covered up all the time and they can't explore with them. Um, so we've done swaddling. We, would, we were going to talk a little bit about temperature. Um, we've already mentioned um, touching baby's uh, skin on the back or the neck, the chest or the back um, to see whether the baby's too hot or too cold and then you take layers off and on. It's a constant worry. We've all been there. Um, but that's part of being a parent, so um, there's no sort of very right or wrong answers. The room temperature should be between 16 and 20 degrees, and you can buy room thermometers. So that can be quite a reassuring thing for parents to have a room thermometer, and then you know um, whether it's in that range. Um, and you can open windows, you can, in the very hot summer, you might want to use a fan, but make sure it's not directed right onto the baby. Um, and if you are out and about in the sunshine, then be really, really careful of baby's skin. Um, they shouldn't be exposed to direct sunlight. Um, certainly as a newborn, even with sunscreen on, the baby shouldn't be in direct sunlight. Um, and we sometimes see parents putting things over the buggy, putting the hood up and putting something over as a sunshade. Um, but do that, we would prefer you didn't do that. Um, if you do, do it with extreme caution because it can get very, very hot. So the advice is to use a parasol or a, you know, a baby parasol um, and uh, just check that the baby's not getting hot underneath. Um, in hot weather, 
Breastfed babies do not need extra water. I think the feeding team are doing uh, weekly sessions with you, so I'm sure they're covering that. Um, you just feed the baby more frequently if they need it. Bottle-fed babies can have cool boiled water if it's very hot, um, but you don't want to fill them up too much with boiled water and then them not take their proper nutrition. So again, with caution, but they can get thirsty in the hot weather. Um, Anything else, That's Natalie? It's a brief whistle -top stop tour. Whistle stop. <laughs> That's a whistle stop tour of baby skin care. Um, so thanks to baby, I don't know what to call him. What should I call him? Maternity voices. If you could recommend a name. Yeah, for maybe our baby. maybe you could all <laughs> name the baby, please. We'd like a name for the baby for the next session. <laughs> that's your homework. Yeah. Uh, so uh, that's over and out from us. We hope you enjoyed uh, the session, and thank you for listening. Yep. Hope we covered everything. Bye. Bye. Oh, I forgot. No, I forgot. I knew I'd forget something. Um, we do have a hotline called Ask the Midwife, and so I'm just going to give you the number now which is, pens at the ready, 07919 213669. Is that, is that back to front if I do that, isn't it? Uh, 667. <laughs> We're not very good double act, are we? 07919 213667. That is Ask the Midwife. Um, and that number has a team of midwives who can answer questions. No question is too silly or too small. So um, we would direct you to ask the midwife. All right then. Bye. Bye. Enjoy your babies. <laughs>